What's up everyone, PaperCut22 here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to build a gaming PC. So I got a bunch of second-hand parts that I bought and got and all of that, so I could build my wife a gaming PC. I want to see if she's interested in gaming and if she likes gaming, and so I got all of these parts and I thought, let me make a video on how to build a PC. So just please bear with me guys, I did make a couple of audio mistakes and all of that, it's the first time for me doing something like this. Um, so just bear with me, but all of the information in there uh, I believe will be helpful to anyone that's trying to build a PC or, or beginning to build a PC. All your pro PC builders out there is probably going to judge the crap out of this video, but that's also fine, you can do it, if that makes you happy you can do it um, yeah so let's get into the video guys please enjoy it go a like there and uh, please don't go a dislike just go a like and then yeah let's get into it thanks guys cheers okay guys the parts let's get right into it so um, the parts that you require obviously uh, you will need a case something to build in so this is a one of my friends gave me this case and I'm going to build everything into here. It does have USB uh, 3 support in the front and all of that. All the good things that you need. Uh, good airflow, all of that. Um, the other thing that you would require is a motherboard. So in this case what I have is I've got a small MSI H61M uh, P31G3 motherboard. So this motherboard supports second and third generation processors. And yeah, it's it's got two DIMM slots and it'll be... It will suffice for what I wanted to do. So that's the motherboard. Um, and then what else we've got here? We've got a graphics card here. So this is the MSI RX 588 gig edition. Um, so it's a very strong graphics card. And I'm pretty sure she'll be able to play anything in 1080p um, full resolution uh, or 1080p uh, max graphics, all of that things. Um, okay, the other thing that you would require definitely on the board is a processor. So this processor is the Core i7 3770, a very nice processor, third generation. Um, and with that also, it's just a stock cooler because we're not going to be overclocking because anyways, the ship can't overclock. So that will suffice for now. Later on, we'll get air cooler, better air coolers and stuff like that if required. The other thing that I have here is I've got low profile uh, Dyson memory. Um, so this is 1600, that's two four gigs. And that's going to be, ru be running in dual channel on the motherboard itself. Um, and then for storage, I've got the boot drive. Um, I've got a 240 gig uh, Western Digital Green uh, SATA SSD. This will just to be run so just to run some programs, and the main games that she's playing will be running from this guy. Additional storage is I've got a Seagate Barracuda, one terabyte. It's a very old drive, but it still works fine, and that'll be additional storage. Um, with that, I've got the nice little Vantec uh, 600 watt power supply. Now this is a normal power supply; it's not a modular one. But nonetheless, it's a 600 watt and that uh, will work fine for what we're going to do here. With that, we also have an addition of a, a disk drive. So if ever she wants to watch some, C, watch some DVDs or something on it, uh, she can do it with this, no problem. And then additional to that, what I also have here is I've got a small fan hub, uh, just in case I need it. And then also I bought, because the motherboard does not have a USB 3.0, what I also got was this nice little PCI Express uh, USB 3 controller that can give you it can give you two USB 3s at the back and it actually has the front header input so this motherboard does not have that but this card does so she'll be able to use her USB 3 in the front as well um, yeah so that's the ports Okay guys, tool requirements. So first thing I have here is a screwdriver. Uh, this is a ratchet screwdriver. It can go reverse front and it can just lock and be a normal screwdriver. Um, I've got an extension bit on it and it has swappable uh, bits also for the front. So here's the entire set of that. Uh, with that I also have another one, additional one. And then I uh, also have thermal paste here. The thermal paste I'm going to use because this is a second hand PC, um, the cooler does not come pre-applied with thermal paste. If you've got a brand new one, you wouldn't be it wouldn't be necessary to do it. Um, so that's it for that. Also, I've got a side cutter just to cut the cable ties or anything that needs cutting. I've got a nice pair of uh, side cutters. Uh, loads of zip ties here. Probably not going to use everything, but uh, yeah, we'll see what works. And then, additional to that, I have some 
uh, SATA cables just in case we need it. I do have, but this is just in case that we do need additional SATA cables. I've got some toilet paper just to wipe things off that need wiping. I like using paper because it does not cause as much static as fabric cloth. Um, yeah, and then additional to that, I've got my entire box of screws here with different mounting screws and all of that. Um, so if you've got a brand new set, your, your box will probably come with everything that you need. Your case will come with everything that you need. But in this case, I've got an entire set of screws here that I am going to use. So yeah, the first thing that I like to do before starting a build is I like to disassemble the case. So in, in this case, uh, uh, I've got thumb screws on the back, so I don't require a screwdriver, but sometimes these are fastened quite tightly. Um, so you maybe need a screwdriver handy just to loosen them, but because this is second hand, uh, they come loose uh, just fine. So I like to prepare the case first, so I loosen all of that. And now because I've got my handy dandy little uh, screwdriver box here, screwdriver box, screw box. Uh, I like to uh, place my stuff right in there where I know I'm going to get the right screws. So then what I do is I just remove the side panels and I put them somewhere safe where they won't get damaged, especially if you've got a tempered loss side panel. In this case, I don't. This is just perspex and metal, but we don't want scratches on them. So I'm going to put them away. Now that we've got that part out of the way, the other thing that I like to do is Especially with fans, most cases come with pre-installed fans, most don't. Most only come with one, most only come with two, most are filled completely. In this case, uh, there already is two uh, fans here in the front. Now, I can show you guys if I open this. Um, there's already two pre-installed fans in the front here. So, I don't need to do anything here. It's already been done for me. Um, so, I'm just going to pop this back on and um yeah I don't, I don't need to do anything else here so in this case i can just uh, pop this back and yeah that's it so the second part that i always like to check is also obviously the top check if my fans are anything like that that is if i am installing a normal air cooler if i was to do a liquid cooler i would do things a little bit differently but let's just say for for this build it's an air cooler so my fans are on the top already installed and my fan at the back is already installed, so I don't need to do that. The other thing that I like to do now is I like to put the, the case on its side. And when I do that, I check my standoffs inside. And I'm going to get, bring you guys a bit closer now so you guys can see what I'm talking about inside of this case in regards to the stand, standoffs. Okay, let me show you guys the standoffs. So there's six of them there. One, two, three four and five and six so these are already installed and it's the, all i need for the motherboard now usually when you get a brand new case they are already pre-installed if they're not pre-installed you will get the hardware from that so most manufacturers let me just get it here most manufacturers have a small box inside of there and you take it out and it's full of mounting hardware for your stuff everything that you would require would be in here and that will usually have the right screws for this if you're like me and you have a second hand one and you do not have the correct screws what i like to do is i'll just take a bunch of them and i'll take screws and i'll test fit everyone to make sure i've got the correct screw for that standoff so yeah that's basically in preparation with my case let's go on to the next step okay guys so the motherboard first thing is first usually when you get the motherboard this part over here the cpu slot will have a cover on it so if you don't and you do have a second hand pc be very careful with it so the first thing that you need to do is you need to unlock this so what you do is you press down and you come out and you lift and the entire thing will lift off by by itself and then you can just flip it over now that your socket is exposed you take your cpu and you make sure that your cpu aligns with the socket before you place it inside so how you can do that is it's got a small arrow here and it is marked on the motherboard and also it has small notches here and here depending on the chip and it has a small input there and there a small th plastic that this will sink right into so what i'd like to do is i like to place it there I just like to wiggle it to make sure that it's there and then I lower this bracket and I lower the arm and you, it'll feel really awkward but you go down and you hook it in and now 
the CPU is seated. Now guys, there's a lot of debate on how to apply thermal paste, but I found that just a small granule, looking like a small granule of rice will suffice. So I'm gonna apply it now. And there we go, that's enough. Well, mine made a small circle, but that's fine. Um, so that is the amount of thermal paste that I'm going to use. And now I take my CPU cooler and I put it on the motherboard. I just wiggle it slightly to make sure everything aligns. So now what you do is you don't tighten those and those. You go cross with them. So those two I do first, they snap in, and then these two I do next. So now what you do is you go to your motherboard and you check where it says CPU fan and you plug it in there and you'll be set to go on that side. Okay guys, the next thing is RAM. I like to seat my RAM and everything before I actually um, put in my, or, or put my motherboard into my case. It just makes it easier. So what you want to do guys is on the RAM, it's got a small notch there and it's got a small notch there. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that those two notches uh, align perfectly with each other. Now, keep in mind that the motherboard should be supported at the bottom. And then you just press down and they will clip in automatically. And you do the same thing with the other RAM. So every motherboard is different. So if you only had one memory slot uh, or one memory chip, the motherboard manufacturer would probably tell you which one to use. If you had four here, it'll probably most likely tell you to use one and three or one and two, but one and two will be a part from three and four, if that makes any sense. So now our motherboard is ready to go inside of the case. So let's do that next. Okay guys, so the first thing that I like to do when I've got my case ready for assembly is I like to put my uh, power supply in. So over here, what we're going to do is we're going to place the power supply so the fan is sucking cool air in from the bottom and blowing it out the back. So with other cases that's top mounted, you'll have the fan also showing down so it sucks in the air and blows it out. If you're going to mount it the other way around, you're gonna smother the fan, it's not gonna cool the power supply properly and you're going to run into some trouble there. So first thing is first, you need to place it where you want it, or not where you want it, where it actually is going to fit. And once you have it there, what you're going to do now is you're going to screw in the screws of the power supply and you are going to reroute the cables to the back and then for time being just place them inside of the drive bay so they're out of the way. Now we're gonna put in the motherboard but first you need to route your cabling from the power supply. So for the motherboard uh, most most cases or most motherboards the power to the motherboard one of them um, is through here. This is either the four pin or the eight pin but in this case this motherboard's does not have it there. Uh, as you can see, this motherboard is right over there. So it's far from there. So I'm not gonna do it that way around. What I'm going to do is, I'm gonna do it after the fact, but now we need to install uh, the IO shield. Now this is important, many people forget it. And make sure that your audio ports are at the bottom and the PS2 ports are at the top. If you don't have PS2, just make sure the audio ports are at the bottom so you don't uh, put it in the wrong way around. So. Align it in the case and then you just click it. You can hear the clicking sound and then you'll know it is in. So always remember guys to, before you handle a motherboard, to touch something metal to discharge or to wear your wrist strap. In my case, I just discharge touching something metal that I know is earth and we won't have any problems with static electricity. So right then guys, now we're going to lower the motherboard. So you make sure that it is aligned perfectly and you just lower it in and there we go until the holes um, align perfectly. Now in most of the new cases you'll have one standoff that's got a slight uh, indent to it or a small nipple that the first hole can uh, uh, go into and it'll align perfectly. So now what you do is we're just going to tighten the six screws and that's your motherboard inside of the case. Okay guys, so now we want to uh, fit our power cables to the motherboard. The first one that we're going to fit is our 24 pin. So you route the cable however your case will allow you to route it. And then what you do is, 
you align it with the slots, taking care that the ho small hook, pin, hook here will hook on the motherboard itself. So what I like to do here is, I like to just take my finger and support the motherboard underneath, and then I like to press down until I hear or feel the click. So that is for the 24 pin, and now we are connected with the 24 pin. The next one what we are going to do is the either 8 or 4 pin power connector also for the motherboard. So in this case it's just going to be a 4 that's going to go there and I just click it in making sure that it aligns correctly with the rest of the board. Okay guys connecting the front I.O. So the first is we have here is if we can see we've got the reset switch we have the HDD LED and it's marked positive and negative and then we have the power switch and then we have a power LED also if it can focus positive and uh, blah, 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 negative okay so on this specific motherboard, it's not marked clearly as to where it'll go, but on this MSI board, it'll be JFP1. Now, most motherboards have on it also a small thing that tell you where what should be plugged. If yours does not, go into your manual and check where uh, what should go. In this case, I know that on the first two pins from this side, my HDD LED will be and positive is the first pin so it's going to be plugged in like that so i'm going to plug it in now and then second to that or next to that is going to be my reset switch which orientation does not matter but i like to keep it the same and with the lettering showing at the bottom i'm just going to slide that in as well and then one pin will be left open that's completely normal guys now on the top of that the first two pins is going to be your power led now with your power led it's the first one is also positive so you can plug that in and the second one is going to be your negative, so we need to plug that in as well. There we go. Oops, it wasn't aligned beautifully, let me just redo it. There we go. Okay, and then the next one is your power switch, which you can also, would will be the next two pins above the reset switch. Now guys, with the power LED and the HDD LED, if you do not have black cables and it's not marked clearly, usually the one that has color will be your positive. So if it's, or, or what I mean by color is, say if it's red and white and just white, the red and white will be your positive. Say it's green and white and white, the green and white will be your positive. So always remember that guys. Um, as you can see on the motherboard, it will be uh, marked as USB. And as you can see on this one, one pin is closed and over here it'll be it'll miss one point. So make sure that aligns and then you just plug that in as well. Okay guys, last but not least, the audio. So the HD audio will go into the audio port on the motherboard. Taking care again, you'll see one pin is closed off. Let me just let it focus. One pin is closed off and over there it'll be missing one pin. So then you just align it perfectly and you just go ahead and plug it in. So now everything in the front I.O. is connected. Everything except for the USB 3. Now the USB 3 I don't have on this motherboard but we're going to be fit we're going to fit the card now now that will fit it. Okay guys so now what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the case for our um, graphics card and for our USB 3 controller. So now all you need to do is because this is thumb screws we can remove these uh, small shield things PCI, I don't even know what you call them, shields or whatever. Now I know my graphics card is going to take two and my USB 3 controller is going to take one. So I'm going to remove three of them. So cheap cases usually don't have where you can unscrew them. 
um, they basically have ones that are fitted and you have to wiggle them to loosen them now that I usually like to do before I install the motherboard just so I don't hit any small parts on my motherboard when I do that so I've got three slots open now so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fit my USB 3 controller before I put in my graphics cards just because everything is more accessible and easier to get you when I do it, it when I do it like that. So as you can see there is the front ISO uh, IO USB 3 is that one over there and it takes a power connector as well. Um, so I'm going to fit this. So taking care that you're aligned uh, perfectly with that as you can see there's a small notch in the card itself and a small notch uh, on the card itself so I'm just going to go in and there it fitted it snapped in so now what I do is I take my screw that I took out and I just tighten it in place making sure everything is aligned correctly and now that I've done that, I can go ahead and I can plug in my USB 3 uh, controller or my front IO's USB 3 I can plug in. Okay guys, so actually what I'm going to do before I put in the graphics card is I'm actually going to fit my SATA cables. So um, these are what they look like. Um, some of them have 90 degree angles and some of them are straight um, and most of them do have lock tabs nowadays but you get that don't have as well I'm going to use these braided ones they look really nice um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit them before I put in the graphics card because once I put in the graphics card I'm going to struggle to get to these ports over here and I want to use these ports uh, for my um, SSDs and so on um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put the first one in that is a 90 because it's going to be under the graphics card and that way um, it's out of the way because my drive base leave me ample room for the SATA cable so I'm not worried about 90 degree angle ones there and then over here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug one in there and underneath that I'm going to plug in the other one now I've got three drives I've got the um, the normal hard drive, an SSD drive and the optical drive and yeah I'm just going to rub these cables um, so they can go towards the hard drive, SSDs and optical drives. Okay guys getting to the fun bit, uh, mounting the graphics card. So what you want to do is you just want to remove this protector and then you're ready to lower it in. So you'll see it has a notch right over here and on the motherboard itself i don't know if you guys can actually see this yeah you can there's a notch there so what you want to do is you want to lower this graphics card very slowly uh, making sure that it aligns with everything and then you want to once you've lowered it in there um, and it's corresponding with everything you just want to press on it lightly until it clicks in and now that it's clicked in you can tighten the screws okay guys once you've done that um, you can now install or install the power connector on your graphics card so in my case it's an 8 pin so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just gonna align it and then I'm just gonna click it in okay guys so now what we're going to do is we're going to fit our optical disk drive most people would probably insert the blu-ray but this is just a normal dvd writer um, so what you want to check is you see here is your uh, sata power and your sata power and data cable so those ones are going to be needed to plug in so what you do is you just put it at the front of your case and you just make sure for this case it has to be unlocked and you just slide it in and you slide it in and then it slides in and then what you do is you can just on this case lock it and that will be in place and then you can connect your SATA power and data connection uh, on it okay guys so now we buy our storage so with this case, specific case um, it comes with these little adapters um, so with this one I can just pop them on they just simply pop on like that on this side and on this side 
and then what I can do is I just basically slide it into where I want it to go. I'm going to put it on the second one until it clicks. Now it's in place. This SSD drives works the same. It's just going to screw like that and I'm going to put these things on the side and then I'm going to also fit it in there. I actually wanted to skip this there but I think it's important that I actually show you guys how it's done. Um, so over here we've got the, the, the SATA power and the SATA data cable. So I'm just going to show you guys how to connect them. Now you'll notice on the drives that it has a small notch on the one side of the power and on the data also small that that is just to show you the alignment of the drives so what i'm going to do is what you need to do is you need to take it and plug it in so it corresponds and then you'll do the same with the data and it'll click in and that's how you do uh, the drive but i'm going to do the ssd and then the cable management and then we'll switch on the pc and do a final word for you guys all right then guys that is it that is how to build a pc so this was everything was refurbished here and second hand and i actually feel good about it because i ended up not spending as much cash as you would buying new and everything works 100 percent fine so um yeah please let me know in the comment section guys if this was helpful and informative for you guys if you liked this sort of video uh, also what i'm going to do is in my next video i'm going to show you guys how to install windows 10 on a uefi bios uh, using a gpt partition uh, that's the way to install windows 10 and yeah i'm going to show you guys how to do that as well so please guys give me a thumbs up give me a, some comments and stuff it was really hard work doing all of this and yeah guys thank you for watching please like comment share and subscribe uh, check you in the next one cheers guys